I'm Keith Parsons and in today's video we're going to talk about some of the built-in wireless diagnostic tools that are built into Mac OS. If you have a Mac computer, Big Mac, desktop iMac, laptop, Air, MacBook, they all have these tools built in so you can have wireless diagnostics wherever you like. If you look in the up here, there's a little boing, 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 the little Wi-Fi symbol. If you click on it, you have the ability to turn on and off Wi-Fi. You can see every now and then it'll say looking for networks. It's uh, on, a, on a periodic basis. It'll go out and look and see if there's any new networks. Under personal hotspots, you can control that. But right now I can see my iPhone is available to me as a personal hotspot. It would use its cellular signal and turn over to me. And right now, here are the APs that I can see in the air. And I'm currently connected to the Wireless LAN Professionals, the WLAN underscore pros SSID. There's a little check mark in front of it. And it's fairly simple. I can come down and open more under network preferences and see more. But this just lets me see what's going on. If I have a trouble, I can turn it on and off and reconnect back up again. If I'm on an airplane and I want to go into airplane mode, I can just come here and turn this off. But there's an extra feature. If you hold down the option key and hit that same thing, you're now going to be given more detailed information, more options, more information. You can see down here my IP address, the router, the type of security I'm running, signal, noise, MCS, all that extra information is available to you. So Mac OS has it. It's just not always brought to the front unless you do the little option to get that extra information. Additionally, we can see here, we can go up to this wireless diagnostics tab and make this choice. And if I choose wireless diagnostics, it's going to come up and say, do you really want to do this? This is how you might capture some data and send it back to Apple to have them help you do some reviews. Now it's going to collect quite a lot of information. So if I come over and hit continue, it does a little diagnostic test. It's going to be running a series of tests and we're going to see what some of those are when we look at the reports. Now, right now, it's collected the information, and it says, do I want to continue to monitor my, yeah, I could sit here and just watch it and collect more data to give back to whoever's going to be doing the analysis, or I can just instead, and for this case, we're just going to go straight to uh, the summary, and now I could give it a name. This is my, you know, test 17 that I'm running. I could say something information about I'm on a MacBook Pro 16 and you could fill in whatever information that's going to go along with this. If you're having someone do the analysis for you, the more information you give them in this mode, the easier it is. Now this diagnostic report is going to take a little while, some minutes to build the whole report together. So I'm just going to go fast forward and show you the results. The results will come up as a little tar zip file. And when you open the zip file, you get a folder. And inside the folder, there's also some additional, uh, more, more additional uh, zips. But we'll just look at some of the text files that it makes. Now, again, this was built into Mac OS and it's not made for the, it's not end user friendly. So one, they hit it behind the option key. And two, what they give you, people are like, what do I know here? Well, as wireless professors, there's some things we can look in here and see. As coders, or if I was you know, trying to diagnose why a app couldn't do something, there's enough information there to help that as well. So there's information on the Apple wireless status. I can look here and see whether or not AWDL is enabled, what's the mode, what's the master channel. Uh, Again, you might want to look here and see why you might want to not keep channel 149 in your channel plan because it's one of those things that Apple uses kind of on the side, especially if you're running Apple TVs and the like and your Apple TVs are wireless. We can look down and see other things like there's a connectivity report. If you scroll them to the right until you can get them to tighten up a little bit, we can see who they pinged. They're pinging local. Now, this is for my personal situation here where I'm sitting, but it's going to be doing and some ping results. There's a whole series of those you can look at. And they will be, again, for your own thing. We can look over and see, you know, with some history of the events that are going on, who they pinged, what the losses were. And these were, some were mine, but some of them were ones that 
Apple had put in there to go to some specific places they wanted to test. We can also look at the configuration and see how my device is configured right now. And you can see that I have wi my Wi-Fi link is set to WM Pros. I have an IP address for IPv4. I don't have an IPv6 address. And all the rest of the information here about me, whether it is or is not. And if you look at the, the way this works, it's kind of like looking at a packet decode. It decoded just a couple little bits here and turned around and said, the answer is the current network is not Passpoint. Well, I'm not on a Passpoint network. But this could be very useful information if you're trying to diagnose individual clients remotely. So you could have them do this, option key, run the diagnostic report, and then just send you the zip file and you could do all the detailed analysis to find out what's going on. So built into a Mac OS is the ability not only to have the quick, easy drop down of saying, where am I right now? I can choose which SSID to join. Or with the option key, I can see more detailed information. Or with the option key, I can run a full diagnostic re report. 